Hello guys, today we are inside out, so it's the last good Pixar movie, of course I've not seen Coco, I did it before on TV, but I have to wait until literally next week to see that, so I can't really tell you if Coco breaks the mold from, you know, the good dinosaur, as I call it, the bad dinosaur, and of course Fire Ian, Fire and Doyle is pretty good, but yeah, your dinosaur is a disappointment, and of course you have the pretty bad incredible sequel but then again i didn't really like the first movie to begin with so i wasn't going to like the second movie i don't know why if i was going to think the second movie was gonna save the franchise because it does continue the same plot as i didn't i just didn't like the plot of the incredibles it's just so odd but inside out is a movie that is that deals with both serious and adult topics at the same time it deals with the topic of what goes inside your head what goes inside your head the other movie, Soul, deals with what happens after you die. This deals with and gives you like relatable characters for each emotion and kids to say, Oh yeah, I have these like characters in my head and stuff or something like that. It gives you like these characters that you can relate to for each emotion. And I think they do that pretty well in this movie and film. They do this pretty well in this movie and film. They do it much better than... The Emoji Movie, which was released three years after. I bet they made the Emoji Movie because of this movie. They said, oh, you know what? This movie named Inside Out was so successful. Well, it said Sony, let's make our own. But it's about emojis, something even more relatable for our younger audiences. But I think this movie is, you know, yeah, I think we all know the Emoji Movie was a cash grab on Inside Out. Because they said, you know what? Disney and Pixar can make their own movie about emotions. Said Sony, let's just make our own. And it's just absolutely just funny how bad, the, how bad the Emoji movie is and how good this movie is in comparison. Because both movies both deal with the same subject material. Oh, which is just funny and one of them is so great and one of them is so bad. I'm not going to spoil the movie for you like I usually do. So I can't really tell you anything about the movie because you should really watch it for yourself. But yeah. I'm not going to spoil a movie, because I usually do kind of spoil movies plot, like The Incredibles 2, I did that. But again, I didn't like the movie, so I didn't really give a crap. I did like, spoil like some other movies plot lines. But yeah, this movie is actually pretty good. It's it's pretty relatable for both older people and younger people, where it is pretty good. So they, and, I, and I I know several people have said, oh, I didn't really like this movie this much. And I don't know why. I don't know why some people didn't like this movie. Again, I bet it's probably the same reason I didn't like The Incredibles. It just does not... Not everybody's going to like this movie. Not everybody's going to like every movie on the face of the planet. And I think we should all realize that. Because my sister didn't like this movie. She hated this movie. Be, which I don't know why. This movie wasn't even bad at all. It was actually pretty good. And it was, a, you know, there. So all the emotion characters, you know... If you have been angry, you can relate to anger the most. If you have been sad, it can relate to sadness. It just gives you a character who eats emotion. And they have their own unique personalities related to the emotions. And I like how at the end of the movie, it shows that everybody had the same emotions in different forms. Like they saw dogs and cats as well. That cats and dogs have the same emotions as well. And I like how the cats at the end of the movie, this is, that, this is after the movie ended like, after we ended, I, like, they sold out, like, all the things of the cats, and the cats are, like, walking around, and that shows, like, the weird reactions that cats have, because, you know, the cats, and I think one plot hole that picks out, if all the Pixar movies are actually out connected, is the movie Soul. What happens to the emotions when your character becomes a soul? Do they carry on with the soul, or something like that? Or, yeah, do the emotions carry on? If all Pixar movies are truly connected, which again I think the, I think this movie does deal with every Pixar movie, because I think every character in Pixar movies has these emotion characters in them. Same thing with Soul, with the exception of Coco, which again deals with a different cultural afterlife in that movie. And yeah, I think that's like one plot hole of this movie is the movie Coco and Soul, which came out afterwards, especially Soul, which characters become a soul after that, what happens to the emotions. I think that movie has to do a theory ground there, what happens to the emotions that they die. But again, this movie deals with all the stuff like subconscious memories, long term memories, memories being deleted. And of course, they have a thing like, you know, like certain songs playing over and over again. And. You know, like how people have songs playing in their head, even though they, like, 
they, they get in their head or something like that. Like some people just get like these songs randomly get in their head. They even so that like the mute like sometimes people have like songs in their head they just can't get it out. You know something like stuff like that happens in the movie, and it basically explores all the things that happens in people's head and a way that everybody can understand. So that's basically about Inside Out. It's a pretty good movie. If you like and movies for animated movies, this is probably one of the better animated movies that except it came out in 2015. Teen. Definitely much better than Zootopia, which came out a year later. So that's basically it. Goodbye.